Welcome to USA Global TV and Radio, where our mission is to provide education, entertainment, hope, and inspiration. USA Global TV and Radio connects you with experts and audiences all around the world every single day to help you succeed in business and to live a richer life. Visit us at usaglobaltv.com to learn about career and life-changing training and mentoring programs like The Listening Mentor. Subscribe to our newsletter to stay informed about our special programs and offers. Discover how you can become a guest on one of our shows or a host or producer of a USA Global TV and radio show of your very own. That's USA Global TV and radio, where the doctor is always in. Hello, beautiful soul family, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom and Insights, your home for spiritually guided transformation and empowerment. I am your host, Dear James, and together with the Unseen, Spirit, Source, and Symphony, we look at the current energies, the intuitive insights and wisdom, and we go as guided. And beautiful, big messages, big energy. Um, Mercury just went direct on um, Monday, the 9th. Um, and this, I'm sorry, that's not true. Mercury went direct a little while ago. It re-entered on Monday, Virgo. <laughs> a little Mercury slip there. Welcome, Alicia. So it re-entered Virgo. This is where it went. It began when it retrograded. So we're back in Virgo now. And as of today, we are clear of the post-shadow, so the post-retrograde shadow. So we're working with that Mercury retrograde having re-entered. It's now direct. It's re-entered Virgo. We're working with that chart. So let's look at some of the main themes for this chart. Well, let me just bring up the chart really quickly and show you all. So this is the chart we're working with astrologically. It's Mercury re-enters Virgo on 9-9. That was Monday. And today, the 11th, we are out officially out of the shadow. It's back where it began before it went retrograde. And so with this, we have these main themes of holism, H-O-L-I-S-M. And holism, the theory that parts of a whole are in intimate interconnection, such that they cannot exist independently of the whole, or cannot be understood without reference to the whole, which is thus regarded as greater than the sum of its parts. Holism is often applied to mental states, language, and ecology. And this term of holism um, the, this quote, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts, is from a South African general and statesman, Jan Smuts. And so it comes from the Greek holos, meaning whole, W-H-O-L-E, to be whole. And this message about being whole, you're going to see it in the Sabian symbols, you're going to see it in the, uh, in the Yijing with hexagram 28, this overriding message of being whole, complete. Then we also have the North Star, which you'll see it's our mantra. We have critical mass. This is hexagram 28 and how it works with Mars. And Mars is also interacting astrologically this week. Um, the vertex, which is in our chart, which you will see it's in everyone's chart and it's in an event chart. And so like the, um, the Virgo reentry into Virgo, that astrological chart, we're working with it. And how important this symbol is, that the, the Sabian symbol that corresponds with the vertex. And this impulse to be. To be. Not something actionary and so forth, but simply at one with source and self. To be. Then Mercury re-enters Virgo and then ready to launch because we have eclipse season coming up, the beginning of it next week. So as we work through this 
these main themes that we just discussed. Let's look at the main energies just quickly. It's a nine month, so we have this small sur uh, restraint, surrender, just to keep surrendering. The 11, 9 11, peace, the antithesis of what happened in 2001, and yet 23 years later, on this very day, this force of peace and to move forward in a way that is whole and complete, that is not divided, but is unified. It's an eight year, so we're talking about uniting and unite. 28 is critical mass to adjust, that we are at that critical mass moment where everything just shifts, and you'll see how that plays into the first thing the, un the unseen provided for us today. And then the 28 becomes, the two and eight becomes a 10, and you'll see how the 10 is playing because it's treading, cautious advance. But 10 also denotes renewal, new beginnings, because, of course, uh, one through nine, and then we get 10. And then the one and the zero become a one, which is the creative force to initiate, to initiate this wholeness, to initiate change, to initiate surrender, and surrender meaning to oneself, to the soul, to your soul source connection. So major positive, beautiful energies playing out. And let's go to, um, and just to bring it up quickly, holism is our key word. So again, this, that we are, that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And that is what's so important is for us to realize we 8 billion souls on the planet are greater together than the sum of our parts. because. We are one unified body, earth, Adam, human, man, humankind. So it's about coming together, unifying, uniting, all of this that makes us whole and that affords us peace. And that is the greater overarching message. However, we're going to jump in. Let's go to, I want to bring up a few pieces of Pam Youngin's North Point Journal wonderful astrologer. Um, and this is where we get with our astrological influences. I'm going to back up one second, just to show you all. Here are the astrological influences. On 9 September 3rd, we had the new moon in Virgo at 11 degrees. On the 4th of September, Mars entered Cancer. So this actionary, and it's slogging its way through, if you will. And yet, on the 9th, Mercury re-enters Virgo. That was Monday. Today, the 11th, Mercury exits its post-retrograde shadow. And then upcoming on the 17th, we have the full moon partial lunar eclipse at 26 degrees Pisces. So we're going to enter um, the final eclipses of, of 2024, this capstone moment year, as the unseen has been speaking of it. And the point is, and this comes from Pam Youngin's North Point Journal. So our astrological influences, our theme is ready for launch. We're ready for this. We're ready to, you know, Scotty, beam me up, to beam ourselves forward and into this, as you'll see, a whole new world. And so from Pam Youngin's North Point Journal, she says, ready for launch. As most of us are already sensing, the remaining weeks of 2024 are going to be very transformational. There are 16 weeks remaining in 2024, in this capstone moment year. And she speaks about eclipse season. We are now in eclipse season when fate seems to take us by the hand and life-altering events often occur. Our new moon last week opened the door to the eclipse energies. That was the Virgo new moon, on the, uh, I believe, on the 2nd. Um, and it opened the door to these eclipse energies. Welcome, Ava, which will build in strength in the days leading up to the partial lunar eclipse. It's a full moon partial lunar eclipse on September 17th. This is going to be next Tuesday. We, will, uh, we then will navigate the two-week between eclipses zone when life takes on a very surreal quality and time seems to stand still. A, quote, ring of fire annual annular solar eclipse new moon then occurs on October 2nd. So they come, they're two weeks apart. The first is going to be the full moon partial lunar eclipse followed by the new moon solar eclipse. 
And we will be assimilating those energies through the full moon on October 17th, which will be a very powerful lunation in and of itself. So you can see that we've got big energies, you know, because again, eclipses, they eclipse things out of our lives, they eclipse things into our lives, they bring about major change, major transformation. And I just want to go to the first thing that the unseen gave us on this theme of eclipses. But uh, the first thing they said is transmuting the past. And then I heard as the world turns. And all I saw were these machinations, like the, this, the, the mechanisms, gears, shifts, and so forth. And then I saw and heard the Wheel of Fortune. And so we have this beautiful image of the Wheel of Fortune. I'm just going to bring it up. And remember, this is from the uh, Tarot of Mystical Moments. And you see all of the, the gears, the internal workings. Um, and which is mechanisms and machinations, the plot or scheme. And so, and again, heart centered, she's holding a pocket watch. So this denoting that it's heart centered, it's divine, divine timing. And that all of this is playing with this transmuting the past as the world turns. And the wheel of fortune is, it's the 10th card in the of the major arcana in tarot and so and it denotes a common aspect to most interpretations of this card within a reading is to introduce an element of change in the querence life such change being in station position or fortune such as the rich becoming poor or the poor becoming rich well of course the aquarian age is rebalancing the matriarchal era is rebalancing. It's all about harmony and balance and justice and this and equality and equanimity. And so we can see how transmuting the past as the world turns, there's a shift. I mean, and if, if you just imagine Mother Earth, the globe and everything, the, the universe, the planets and everything shifting, the machinations and the mechanisms turning, and that this wheel of fortune and so it brings us into this beautiful, and, and this is from Richard Rudd uh, with the Gene Keys, and it's Gene Key 47, and it's, it's talking about transmuting the past and oppression, transmutation, transfiguration. And where old karmic issues from the past can sometimes resurface for us to work with, instead of feeling overwhelmed by such forces, we can open our hearts wider and embrace the miraculous. This is a miraculous moment. This is transmuting the past. It's transfiguration. It's moving beyond because as the world turns, the wheels are shifting and we are releasing oppression, suppression, the past, those things that held us down, kept us back. We are releasing them. And that is the nuance of all of these energies, and it's certainly the impact. It's eclipse season. <laughs> We're in it. Mercury moving forward, fully running forward, how we communicate, how we speak and think. And it's going to the heart of the matter. Because the heart of the matter is transmuting the past. Now, our main theme, let me just bring this up. Our main theme is what lies before us the impulse to be. And the unseen has been talking for quite some time, and you see this beautiful image of the, the sea, the ocean, um, stormy skies, beautiful, like all the rocks, jagged rocks and edges. And you see this beautiful mermaid, a woman, a mermaid sitting on the rock. She's emerged from the ocean. There is a seal journeying with her, embracing her, in, uh, to the left of her. And then, of course, you see a, a white dove, the white dove denoting the Holy Spirit. And so this main theme of what lies before us, the impulse to be, is directly tied to the um, first hexagram. Pardon me, not the first hexagram. Mercury's jiggling with me a little bit. It is the Sabian symbol. 
that goes with this astrological chart of Virgo of, of Mercury re-entering Virgo. And it's the vertex. It's the symbol that's associated with the vertex. What's the vertex? The vertex in astrology is a sensitive point in the chart of a person or event that is believed to indicate significant life events or turning points. Represented by a symbol that appears as a capital V small x, the vertex is used by predicative astrologers to help foretell how and why you'll cross paths with a fateful event or relationship. So this has to do with fate and destiny. Vertex, fate, destiny, this turning point, a significant life event. And because it's in this astrological chart for Mercury re-entering Virgo, it's representing something to all of us, to the collective, to the whole. So the Sabian symbol is Aries 1. Aries 1, it's the first degree of Aries, that begins the astrological year, Aries. Pisces ends the year, Aries begins the year. The Sabian symbol is a woman just risen from the sea. A seal is embracing her, thus the image for the main theme, what lies before us. And the unseen has spoken to us many times about what lies before us. It's what's before us, and it's what came before us. This golden age, this golden era, this harmo- this uh, unity, harmony, balance, this era of goodness, of greatness. The keynote is emergence of new forms and of the potentiality of consciousness. And the Sabian symbols, of course, are from Dane Rudyard and Astrological Mandala. Such an action is not to be considered a powerful, positive statement of individual being. In the beginning is the act, but it is often an imperceptible, insecure act. This reemergence, a woman just risen from the sea. This reemergence. The small, tender germ out of the sea does not loudly proclaim its existence. It must pierce through the crust of the soil still covered with the remains of the past. It is all potentiality and a minimum of actual presence. This is talking about the reemergence of the divine feminine, of the matriarchal era, the Aquarian era. And it doesn't, so in essence, it doesn't come out. It's not an ego mind personality act. It's an act of being, of presence, of, of I am, of being. And it must break through the crust of the remains of the past. In the symbol, therefore, the emergent entity is a woman, symbolically speaking, a form of existence still close to the unconscious depths of generic biological nature. Meaning, it's the closest to our soul, the divine feminine, this nourishment, this intuition, this knowing, is feminine. It's in nature, and it's we carry, no matter whether you're masculine, feminine, somewhere in between, it doesn't, mender, it doesn't matter the gender and so forth. We each have divine masculine, divine feminine. This is speaking to that form. Filled with the desire to, uh, to be rather than self-assertion. To be. Just keep, keep thinking that phrase, to be. It's not actionary. It's I am. It requires nothing of us other than to be. The woman is seen embraced by a seal because the seal is a mammal which once had experienced a biological, evolutionary, but relatively unconscious emergence, yet which retraced its steps and, quote, returned to the womb of the sea. The seal, therefore, represents a regressive step. It embraces the woman who has emerged, because every emergent process at first is susceptible to failure. So this moment is susceptible to failure. This process is indeed surrounded by the memory, the ghosts of past failures during previous cycles. So in our individual lives, we're emerging. There's something, we're on the precipice of something. Maybe it's a a move, a new 
position, a new, a complete change of life. And so because we're at the precipice of it, it can be susceptible to failure because every emergent process at first is surrounded by the memory, the ghosts of past failures during previous cycles, our life experience. We might, the fear of that or the failure, air quotes, failure of that may be causing us to hesitate or to not advance. It's the same individually, collectively. The impulse upward is held back by regressive fear or insecurity. The issue of the conflict depends on the relative strength of the future ward and the past ward forces. It's our will. What's at your center? Is it your will? Is it your divine will to move forward individually, collectively? Because when the regressive fear and insecurity presents itself, it's going to be what's at our center that either immobilizes us or propels us forward, gives us the courage and the strength and the determination and the joy to move forward. The possibility of success and that of failure is implied throughout the entire process of actualization. Every release of potentiality contains this twofold possibility. It inevitably opens two paths. One leads to, quote, perfection in consciousness, the other to, quote, disintegration. The return to the undifferentiated state, the state of hummus, manure, cosmic dust, meaning to the symbolic great waters of space or chaos, to where, to where we came in its um, raw form. So there's two choices. There's a choice. There's two paths. Are we choosing, quote, perfection in consciousness, meaning evolution, ascendance, moving forward, seeing what's on the other side, what lies before us, or disintegration, going backwards, uh, being immobilized, staying in a state of fear, chaos. The stage, this stage and symbol characterize and represent, quote, the impulse to be. It's not ego mind personality based. The impulse to be is soul source. It's it's knowing. It's I am. It requires no statement, no argument, no defense, because it simply is. I am this impulse to be. And so this is a huge symbol for us to recognize because it's, the, it's Aries 1. It begins the astrological year. Well, let me just bring up very quickly the, uh, the chart. I'm going to share my screen with you all and just show you this image. This is the astrological wheel for Mercury re-entering Virgo. It happened on 9-9. Note the very strong black lines, basically north, south, east, and west. They represent the cardinal points, the cardinal directions. They are the ascendant, the descent, the IC, and the MC in the astrological wheel. What's important about this is to note, if you see each one at the very top, one degree. You go to the left, one degree. You go to the bottom center, one degree. You go to the far right center, one degree. They're all at the first degree, which is denoting, welcome Olivia, which is denoting new beginnings, this opportunity of what lies before us, the impulse to be, transmuting the past as the world turns, these gears are shifting, and the wheel of fortune. It's the 10th major arcana in the tarot. So here's the 10 again. The 10 plays out in the numbers that we're working with. So you can see that We have this opportunity, the unseen, it's unprecedented opportunity to advance, to move beyond where we've been. And the lot of fortune symbol, the Sabian symbol with the lot of fortune, a theatrical representation of a golden-haired goddess of opportunity. 
the keynote, society's efforts at dramatizing the greatness of what it offers to the ambitious person. Civilization as a process demands the goading of individuals to spend their vital energies in the pursuit of achievements which, while fulfilling the individual's ambition and greed, or ego mind personality, nevertheless generate various forms of what we call, quote, progress. So when we look at things from an ego mind personality or superficial place, we're expending our vital energies. Are we doing it on something that is worthwhile, truly authentic, or is it superficial? This sequence of symbols mainly refers to the drive for advancement along, quote, human, all too human paths of growth. So where we've been, Piscean, patriarchal, this era, has been very ego, mind, personality based. It has been driven by perhaps inauthentic, superficial means, goals. Oh, look at this award or that award or, you know, me, 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 I, I, I. And so, again, we have this, we're re-emerging, the divine feminine, re-emerging, coming out of the, out of the sea. There's this potentiality for success or failure, and it depends on our choices. It depends on our will to advance, to move forward. We see in this symbol how socio-cultural forces operate by dramatization and propaganda. We're being you know, being sold a bill of goods, being told you must do it this way, or this is the only way that it matters. When in actuality, what truly matters and has only ever mattered, what's at your center? What's at our center as a collective soul? Is it dramatization? Is it alternate or artificial intelligence? Is it propaganda? Is it fake. The result is all too often a process of, quote, forced growth. So again, we're being called to recognize soul growth, S-O-U-L, soul growth. What's at your center? What really matters? Are we living that impulse to be? Are we living that? Is that who we are? Person, place, company, government, institution, because they're all comprised of people. So what's at your center as a company, as a government, as an institution, as a human? Soul growth versus ego mind personality growth. This forced growth, false growth, forced growth. These are present. And then with Mercury, In a portrait, the significant features of a man's head are artistically emphasized. During the two preceding scenes, the, quote, feel of energy at work has been the dominant feature of a consciousness still strongly ego-centered, yet at times eagerly and devotionally reaching up to a realization of divine or cosmic order. What this is saying is we're so ego-mind personality focused. The energy of it, the feeling of it, the dominant feature of it, and patriarchal, Piscean era, very ego-centered, yet at times we eagerly and devotionally reach up. We want something more. We want something higher, something better, something more pure. This realization of divine or cosmic order. Now we have come in, into the seasonal cycle of the year uh, to the sign Virgo. It is, in a sense, the symbol of harvesting, but it is also that of the path of the discipleship and of all strongly determined processes of training or retraining. So we're at this moment where we're retraining our brains, our our beings, to recognize there's a greater way. What lies before us? What's before us? What came before us? Before this era, before this fall from grace, if you will, where ego, mind, personality has been leading the show for millennia. So it's, we're, we're now at this place of the path of discipleship, the way. And it's about training and retraining. Flooded with and having enjoyed and released energy, 
the personalized consciousness, ego, mind, personality, now must learn the lesson of significant form. It must be able to see life situations as holes, W-H-O-L-E-S, holes of experience, and to discover their meaning by distinguishing their most characteristic features. This is about recognizing the wholeness of us, holistic wellness, holistic medicine, holistic meaning whole. The key word for this stage is is discrimination. Implied in discrimination is both analysis, ego, mind, personality, analysis, and intuition, knowing. So divine masculine, divine feminine. It's both. The mind separates and identifies and unfortunately often exaggerates. What makes a person or a situation different from another? But the intuitive responses of the whole person to what confronts him or her is also essential. For what matters is not only my or your difference, but the place and function this difference occupies in the organic pattern of the evolution of humanity as a whole, meaning of mankind, humankind. See, it's not what It's not stopping at the surface to what differentiates us, what separates us or divides us. That is stopping at the ego mind personality aspect, the discrimination part of it. The the intuitive knowing aspect says to us, ah, there's something under that. There's something deeper. We don't have to speak it. It's known. It's felt. I can see you. I can see your fear. I can see your joy. I can see your anger. I can see your love. I can see your wounds. I can see your successes. And when we move beyond the surface, what is superficial, forced growth, we discover it's number two from the universe, from the unseen. We discover a whole new world. That's what's what lies before us. It's always been there. It's always been within us, and it's always been before us because it came before us. And with the song, it's you know from Aladdin with from Disney, and at the very end of the song, that's where we'll be: a thrilling chase, a wondrous place for you and me. This is this theme playing over and over again from the unseen. Pluto in, back in Capricorn, shaking the roots and the foundations loose, waking us up. I mean, really just slapping us in the face to say, do you hear me? Do you see me? And this is the unseen speaking to us. God, spirit, source, symphony, Allah, Buddha, the all that is. The divine masculine, the divine feminine, the purity of them all, just shaking the crud out of us, yelling and screaming, do you see us? Do you see me? Because it's the purity in all of us that comprises humanity as a whole. It's the purity. It's the goodness. It's the oneness. And when we collectively unify And we have to do it internally first within ourselves, and then we broaden it out. It ripples out to the whole. Well, then imagine, I mean, it would be a whole new world when human beings collectively, when nations and institutions and governments and companies come together as one to seek the best in each of us in all of us. Imagine, imagine that world, a whole new world. That's where we'll be, a thrilling chase, a wondrous place for you and me. And it is exactly that. And it's unprecedented, and yet it came before us. So that's an oxymoron, but yes, contradicts itself what I just said. And yet, it is what came before us, and yet it's what lies before us. It's what's on offer, and it's up to us to choose it, to be it, impulse to be, the impulse to be. So let's look at, because we're at this critical mass, so let's look at hexagram 28. 
Uh, this is from Carrie Hone at CafeOSoul.com. Um, and it's critical mass. Its action is adjust. So the mechanism transmuting the past as the world turns on the wheel of fortune. These wheels are turning, so we're adjusting. The hidden influence is the creative force, the divine masculine, the creative force to initiate change. Its underlining cause is hexagram 27, nourishing vision, nurture, that we nurture the best in ourselves. We don't tear ourselves down. We lift ourselves up. Positive affirmations, beautiful opportunities for um, advancement, leveling up, being greater. It's like they're showing me standing, stand in front of the mirror and practice saying to yourself positive things, positive phrases, words, affirmations, whatever it may be. Notice how uncomfortable you will feel the first time you do it. This is silly. I'm embarrassed. This is weird. That's what's going to happen. And yet afterwards, you'll come to see yourself. And see yourself meaning your soul, the divine. And then with great joy, you'll walk up to that mirror and say, I love you. You're beautiful. You're worthy. I trust you. I love you. And you'll do it with such beingness. It's not from ego, mind, personality. It's not from illusion. It will be from your center, from your soul. You'll mean it at your center. So critical mass. And it's one of our first quotes. Um, To follow the energy of life, you will discover that it is always seeking the best of what you might become. Beautiful pink. The color this week is pink. Pink sky with the rising sun, this field of sunflowers, and this one prominent sunflower at the forefront. To follow the energy of life, you will discover that it is always seeking the best of what you might become. The unseen, our souls, and we'll get to the the true north, the north star, the true north, it is always seeking the best of what we might become. It's why we are being given this opportunity to awaken, to wake up, to break through the crust of the past, to release it, splitting apart, to release it, to receive what lies before us. So critical mass can have the message that something is too much or a situation has come to a condition of critical mass and adjustment is needed. The roof has become too heavy for the support of the ridge poles or foundation. Exuberance of thought or ideas are weighing down on an old foundation that was built to support the past. So the ideas of the future, the ideals, the the idea becomes the new reality. They're wearing down, they're weighing down on an old foundation. Being out of touch with the reality of the situation or excess of some kind can be at play. So are we out of touch with this reality that the past is the past? The present future is is in front of us. It's what lies before us. And so the old ways are collapsing. And the ideas, the hopes, the dreams, the wishes of something more, of that reaching up, are weighing down on the old foundations. They're causing them to collapse. Critical mass suggests the hidden influence of the creative at the root of the situation. The creative source, the unseen. So critical mass suggests the hidden influence of the creative is at the root of the situation, where this tension is actually the driving force of great creativity and accomplishment. Nature uses tension to pull all things beyond the known. Opposites collide and all are lifted to a higher, more sustainable level. We're being lifted higher. How we get there, is up it's individual choice how you get there should you get there meaning will you get there is a choice but what's on offer is being lifted up to a higher place um even while critical mass feels uncomfortable so this change is uncomfortable 
it will lead to a readjustment. In this case, you may have to push beyond what you feel is limiting you by adapting and adjusting. We've got to push past limitations and old you know, stories and scripts and labels that we've told ourselves. We've got to push past them. So it's the mirror effect, standing in the mirror. Whatever it takes to lift ourselves up to release those old burdens. You may need to stand alone with no support during this time of crisis and simply give form to your vision. Too much of a good thing is not always good, so critical mass can also suggest moderation. Nourishing vision without putting it to proper use reveals an underlining cause of perhaps needing to, quote, come out and show the world what you have been working on. So again, if you've been holding back, if you've been fearing the change or whatever the change may represent, Step forward, step through, break free, break through. Because what lies beyond is this whole new you, a whole new world, a whole new you. This can be a perfectionist who spends a lot of time practicing, but is fearful of competition or feedback. Look to your work to stand on its own merit. Because it's not you. Your works, they're not you. You're the custodian of them. You're the one being uh, bringing them forward. However, it's the unseen that they manifest from, that they're created from. So don't be fearful. Just step forward knowing that you're the custodian of what's coming through you. It's it's a game changer. When you shift from it's me doing this, ego, mind, personality, oh, it's me, I, and I'm afraid, and so I'm going to practice, practice, practice before, and I, I never bring it out, versus, oh, it's not me. It's working and coming through me. I'm the custodian. Okay, unseen. Okay, God, what do you want me to do? And you hear the response. You get the first actionary, the knowing, the feeling. And you know to take the next step. It's a game changer. Believe in what you are doing and don't worry about support and acceptance because that is the message of this hexagram. Be undaunted. However, this can be a situation where ideas have taken over what is actually witnessed as experience. You may be heaping an old way of thinking on a foundation of the past. So we need to look to the present future. We need to look forward. How will this, what is it that you want me to do and how will it um, present itself in the future going forward? Because the backdrop is changing. The past The old foundations and institutions and way of being is collapsing. And it's purposeful. It's meant to. It's number three. We stand on the shoulders of giants on all that's come before us. So we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. That's not the moral of the story. We stand on the shoulders of giants of the past. Number three from the unseen. Remembering all who came before us. Stand tall. So whether it's women and suffragette and fighting for the right to vote or civil rights and human rights and, you know, the LGBTQ um, plus movement and so forth, we stand on the shoulders of giants, of all who came before us. So number three is remembering all who came before us, stand tall. And then I heard the words humbled, honored proud, grateful. So we are to be humbled and honored and proud and grateful that we stand at this moment and we stand at this moment because of all who came before us. And in that, we are um, honoring and preserving what they fought for by advancing it, by taking it to its next level by seeing what's on the other side of where we've already been. We honor them by advancing. And again, within, individually, collectively. Um, Either way, a quantum leap into a new way of interacting is in the air. 
the old way of interacting is not sustainable, and the old paradigm will crumble. Critical mass holds the essence of the sage's greatest lesson, tranquility in disturbance. It means that we stand in the eye of the storm, in the eye of the hurricane. If we're out on the periphery, it's chaos, it's madness, it's crumbling, it's disturbance. When we stand in the center, I am, impulse to be, it's tranquility. It is not expectation that you hold to. It is the certainty that everything is unfolding perfectly to create change. That Wheel of Fortune tarot card where she's the heart, so divine center, divine heart, the pocket watch, divine time. So it's unfolding perfectly to create change. You succeed because you find that the tension can actually generate excitement and the joy of doing the works. This moment creates excitement and joy, opportunity, hopes, dreams, wishes for the future, for what lies before us. And this impulse to be, and the impulse to be meaning we operate from our soul. The soul source connection leads. The ego mind personality aligns with it in harmony and balance, in purity, in goodness. So that in this knowing, we have the force, the the creative force, because the soul is the receptive force. So we receive the knowing, we have the creative force, they align, and they usher us forward, individually, collectively. And they so the unseen, they keep reminding us, see these messages individually, how they may play out. For you individually, and then the ripple effect of that collectively as a whole. So, in our final quote, is this beautiful If you must stand alone, be unconcerned. If you must renounce the world, be undaunted. In essence, what this is saying is from the Master, and it's saying, you know, when we face adversity, if we must stand alone, be unconcerned. Don't allow any of the, you know, the monkey mind and the chatter and so forth to deter you or to immobilize you. And if you must renounce the world, be undaunted. It means when we face those that want to go backwards, that want everyone to go back to where we've already been, be undaunted. Again, you don't have to yell, scream, fight, argue. Simply be. Be undaunted. Keep moving forward. Keep listening to your soul source connection. To your North Star. And this brings me to, I'm going to finish up with Pam Youngen's North Point Journal. I'm going to go back to it because she's talking about um, Mars at the bending point. So Mars at the bending point. This week, Mars is square the moon's nodal axis. The lunar nodes are two invisible points in the sky determined by where the moon's orbit intersects the path of the sun. The south node represents what we might call negative attitudes and behaviors, the ones we are transcending or transmuting as we raise our vibrations, transmuting the past as the world turns. It is often called the karmic node, indicating old patterns that we might, uh, that we might, uh, difficult, old patterns that we might, this is not worded right, um, that we might find difficult um, if we're not living consciously. The north node, which is always exactly opposite the south node, shows us our evolutionary path forward and the, quote, positive qualities we are being asked to develop. You can see the correlation between the Sabian symbols, the astrological chart that we're working with for Mercury re-entering Virgo, and Pam Youngen's North Point Journal Astrology, where these, the positive aspects, the, the negative aspects, these, uh, the North Node and the South Node. The sign of the nodes in present day shows humanity's default mode, South Node, and our collective growth pa- uh, path, North Node. In our birth charts, the sign and house of the nodes reveal much about our soul's intended growth for this lifetime. 
When a planet is square, both the nodes, and that square creates friction, it's said that the planet is, quote, at the bending of the nodal axis. This is a challenging aspect that can lead us to revert to old unconscious patterns that do not serve us or our higher destiny. So this is going to be easy to revert in this moment right now. It will, it will be easy to take the cheap road, the low road. So to be mindful of that, to not uh, succumb to that, to be undaunted. Cancer is the sign of the crab. Mars is in Cancer. So Cancer is the sign of the crab, an animal that is easily startled and quickly either withdraws under a rock or attacks with its claws. We tend to forget that we, like the crab, are able to sidle, walk sideways when we feel threatened, instead of going into fight or flight mode. Sidling represents the ability to step away from confrontation when emotions are heightened, while the, inten uh, while the intention of getting a more objective view of the situation. It is not the same as flight because we intend to readdress the problem once our heart and breathing rates have returned to normal. So again, we need not engage in battle and yell and scream and, and take the low road and um, demean and oppress and suppress and all of these things, shadow, all shadow elements. We can sidle. We can move sideways, withdraw ourselves to take that beat, to take that moment so that we see beyond the surface, so that we see what's underneath. Because again, go back to you standing in front of the mirror. What do you see when you first stand before the mirror? Many people won't like what they see. That will be the instant feeling. And it will take practice and determination and faith and trust to see beyond what's in the mirror, what's on the surface. To actually see yourself, your soul. And when you see your soul, you see the divine. You see the purity of your soul, your goodness. It will take effort. However, you will become comfortable, impulse to be, you will become comfortable with it. Lastly, Pam Youngins is saying managing this Mars at the bending aspect will require clear, conscious intention. We just spoke about this with the mirror. Clear, conscious intention, since it could be easy to fall into old reactive patterns. Along the way, we can call upon the many other strengths that are characteristic of Mars and Cancer. Emotional courage, emotional intelligence, and, emp and, and empathic understanding of the fears that are motivating others and ourselves. A deep caring for those we call family, and the ability to handle situations directly and calmly. So again, you can see how um, this impulse to be, be, it's not do, it's be. And when we, I am, when we are being, we simply act with grace and confidence and courage and goodness. We're not out to harm anyone. We're not out to harm ourselves. You're not in harm. You're simply lifting yourself up. You're lifting your vibration to a higher level, to a higher resonance to this whole new world that we all want. I mean, I would venture to say that 90 plus percent of humans, or maybe all humans, truly want better. They settle for less. So that time of settling for less is over. It's, that is a construct of the past. It is a construct of so many generations telling us in our DNA and our lineage that we can't have something or we're not good enough or it takes too much effort or the list goes on and on and on. But that's over. That's a construct of the past. So we move beyond it. So let's look at how Mars, the Sabian symbol for Mars, plays to all of this, to this point. And and let me just denote that, um, because with the Sabian symbol, so Chiron in this chart is speaking to inner fulfillment. Uranus, expect the unexpected, the higher mind, mature new beginnings. Not just new beginnings, but mature. Going back to where we began, an octave higher. So it denotes a mature new beginning. And then the sun in this chart 
inner guidance. So here's the sun, our life force, and it speaks to our inner guidance, our internal soul source GPS. So Mars, a man bundled in fur, leads a shaggy deer. The keynote, the need to overcome stagnation and, quote, cold during trial of endurance. This is a trial of endurance. This transition, this moment, that is what lies before us, is a trial of endurance. This rather enigmatic symbol has suggested an exploration in Arctic regions, but it seems more relevant to see in it simply the difficult phase imposed by the new allegiance upon the reoriented consciousness. So it's easier to see this as a new allegiance upon a reoriented, the wheels are turning as the world turns, consciousness. We're being upgraded. Things are changing. In India, the deer was the symbol of Brahma, the creative god, the creative force. The antlers represent the extension of the mind power located in the head. We can speak to the pineal gland that connects us, our soul source connection. The new path may lead to cold regions requiring insulation from harsh circumstances. There may even be a desire to escape from new responsibilities. The will leads the mind on toward the spiritual north of the soul. Let me just re. There may even be a desire to escape from new responsibilities. See, we may fear moving forward. We may retract. We may feel like, oh, this is so harsh, and I don't know that we can do it. Individually, collectively, I don't know if I can make this change. So we may want to escape the responsibilities and insulate ourselves from these harsh circumstances. And yet, the will, divine will, individual will, The will leads the mind on toward the spiritual north of the soul. A period of trials is implied. The focalized mind may seek to escape uh, escape its limits by venturing forth toward an idealized goal, the North Star perhaps. This represents a testing of the will. We're going to be tested. And this is our mantra. My North Star guides me. There are many stars in this image. There are many stars. So there are many avenues or um, influences and so forth. There's only one North Star. Each of us, individually and collectively. My North Star guides me. So discrimination, discernment. Look to your North Star, not any star, not any direction or any influence, but what's at your center, your soul source connection, your soul leading you. My North Star guides me. There will be a testing of the will. That is what all of this implies. How bad do we want this? How how willing are we to move forward, to advance? That is what is upon us. And we'll conclude with the ascendant symbol, the Sabian symbol um, for the ascended in this Mercury re-entering Virgo. And remember Virgo representing the harvest, what we reap. We're reaping what we sow. The transmutation of the fruits of past experiences into the seed realizations of the forever creative spirit. So it's the transmutation of the fruits of the past experiences into the seed elements that deliver what lies before us, that usher in the future, the the forever creative spirit, because it's forever changing, evolving, ascending. The original formulation of this symbol was both occult, meaning wisdom, and confusing. The light of the sixth race transmuted to the seventh. It could be interpreted in terms of the process of mankind's development through the seven great races, or evolutionary periods, outlined in the second volume of H.P. Blavatsky's Secret Doctrine. 
but there are no other symbols in the series, in the Sabian symbols, having such a frame of reference. What seems more likely to be implied in the revealed image is a reference to the numerological and occult, meaning wisdom, meaning of number six and number seven, especially geometrically expressed in which seven circles, contiguous and of the same size, fill a larger circle whose diameter is three times that of the smaller one. The six circles touching the circumference of the larger one represent the six basic approaches to truth and reality possible to man's developing intelligence. Thus, the well-known six schools of Hindu philosophy, and at the level of energy, the six fundamental colors or rays. So the seven chakras, but there are the six base ones. They culminate in the seventh. But central to this six-fold system is the hidden or occult seventh, the Atma Vidya of Hinduism, the unformulatable truth of the self which both includes and transcends the six approaches, schools, or rays. Meaning, we are more than the physicality of our human bodies, of our earthly expression and experience. Embodied within us is the seventh, the seventh ray, the seventh, um, the seventh chakra, the highest chakra, you know, the higher chakra, our God our divinity, our godness, and thereby it transcends the six approaches. So the soul will always overcome, will always transcend the lower elements, the ego mind personality, the North Star, not a North Star. Number six, also Solomon's seal, represents the synthesis of descending spirit and ascending matter. It represents the fruition of all past efforts, remembering all who came before us, stand tall. All the past efforts. With the sixfold fruition, the seed may be found. The seventh. The seed is the seventh. Outer activity is fulfilled. The six days of creation in the first chapter of Genesis. And the supreme actor can be seen in his changelessness and therefore his transcending all inclusiveness. All that was manifested in the plant is gathered in the hidden seed, which in due time becomes the foundation of a new cycle of existence. Within us is the seed for what lies before us. It's already present. It's already within us, awaiting to be birthed, revealed, experienced, tasted. The fruit, the old fruit, the past, the fruit decays. For a brief moment, the released seed may be seen. This is the seventh period that becomes the creative power, fathering a new cycle. This symbol for Libra, two degrees, refers to the process of centralization in the self, the creative reality. It means coming home, coming coming home to center, to your soul source connection. After the experience of fulfillment in the perfect form of manifestation, meaning after we've experienced this physicality, the, the, the heights of physicality, patriarchal, Piscean, physical, tangible, ego, mind, personality, manifestation. It comes after that. This is what's happening. The matriarchal Aquarian age is coming after the Piscean patriarchal era. This stage refers to a dynamic process in contrast to the picture representing the first stage, a picture of maintained and immortalized, thus static perfection of form. Meaning we don't want to live in in a, in uh, like where we freeze time. Oh, we've perfected something or, Oh, we love where we are and what we have and the way it is. So, This maintained and immortalized, yet static, perfection of form. Because that staticness becomes stagnant. It will decay. Because we cannot freeze time. Formal perfection is now transcended through a process of creative centralization. 
this creative centralization, connecting to your soul source connection. So what came before will now be transcended, transmuting the past. It's going to be transcended through a process of creative centralization. All of us operating from our center. And our center is not our ego, mind, personality. It's not upstairs. It's not in our head. It's in our sternum. It's in our heart chakra. It's in our center. It's our soul source connection. Powerful, powerful, powerful messages, themes. Um, I hope I've done it justice for you all. Um, The last two things from the unseen is they said, once again, and this is a reoccurring message, theme, affirmation, confirmation. It's number four, so it's foundational. Looks like we made it with exclamation points. So the unseen is saying to us, looks like we made it. We make it. It happens. It's a done deal. It's a fait accompli. What's up to each of us? Individual free will. Looks like we made it. What constitutes the we? is up to you. It's your individual choice. However, air quotes, we make it. Looks like we made it. And last but not least, I heard the lyrics from Aretha Franklin's, uh, the song is Chain of Fools. But what I heard was chain, chain of fools. Um, And they said breaking the chain or chains, breaking the chains that bind you. So in this moment of transfiguration, of of advance, of this impulse to be, which is not ego, mind, personality, this impulse to be, break the chains that bind you. Free yourself. Be undaunted. Be unwavering. Be willing to move forward, to face your fears, to say to yourself in the mirror, I see you. I love you. You're worthy. You're great. You're good. You're kind. And move forward. Advance. So until next week, thank you all so much for being on this journey with myself and the unseen, your your comments, your presence is invaluable, and your ripple effect is um, insurmountable because it's rippling out. And whether it's known or unknown, seen or unseen, make no mistake of the master weaver from the unseen, connecting, weaving, layering, connecting all the dots, making this ascension and this evolution possible. So until next week, be well, be kind, love yourselves, practice in the mirror, and uh, and please put in the comments on Facebook on the Dear James uh, show thread for this, um, what your experience is with that. All right? Love you all, and we will see you and be back next week. <laughs>